And welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. MLB The Show has interleague action for you this afternoon. It's the Toronto Blue Jays going up against the New York Mets. Just about set to go now. And today's starting pitcher, Kodai Senga. And Singy, we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots. I've just been so impressed with when it seems like there's more pressure, he's more calm and settles in. He's done an incredible job with runners in scoring position. Most guys, they get a little tight, they start to aim the baseball, but for some reason, he gets looser, the ball comes out of his hand with more life, and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know, tough situations and get his team back in the dugout. Two-two down. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Fights it off, he'll see another. Kicks and deals. Struck him out swinging. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Bo Bichette up to the dish. On the ground. And that's just foul. Got him looking. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Two outs, space is empty. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. next up for the Blue Jays. Two down, nobody on. Right through there for a strike. Here's the 2-2. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Two-two. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Up to the plate is Brandon Belt. Next pitch is popped up. Lindor gets under it. Drops into the glove. And that will end the inning. So no back here at City Field. So here's the lefty, Yusei Kikuchi. What's the scouting report on him? Well, you can see his whip is a little above the league average. Not bad, but I think in this one, he's going to need to control that a little bit better. Try to limit hitters from getting on base. Stay in that windup instead of the stretch. And when he does allow base runners, be able to throw a pitch. He's going to get a swing and miss, get out of the inning so that a base hit doesn't do more damage and put his team behind the eight ball. Three. Got him. One up, one down. No, just a beautiful fastball on the inside corner for that backwards K right there. I think the hitter saw it all the way coming from that opposite arm angle. So I got to think he was looking away and just got locked up by the hard stuff boring in on his hands. One down, base is empty. Tapped softly on the ground. Chapman on the run, throw to first. Quick recovery from the misplay pays off for the out. Now up to hit Francisco Lindor. A switch hitter batting right. The pitch. And down on strikes he goes. And good work there as he gets a one. Back here at the ballpark, top of the second. And now the veteran third baseman, Matt Chapman. Going to count one and two. Two strikes. And another ball assigned to home plate duty is Ricky Holiday. Boog, and something I've heard players saying about Ricky's strike zone is how he will call the high strike. That could be something that's tough to deal with, especially if you've got a guy out there coming at you with high velocity. Oh, he dropped it. Kicks and fires. 
That one out to right. Marte moves under it. One away. And now it's Dalton Varsho. The left fielder, number 25. Dalton Varsho. Left hand batter waits. And now the count, one and two after the swing and the miss. Good eye right there. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two down. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically he likes to shoot the ball the other way, but that time, a little anxious. Whit Merrifield up to the plate. And there's a foul ball. No score here in the second. At the belt and fires. Ball. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss struck him out. Bottom of the second. Here's Pete Alonso. Next offering is in for a strike. There's a swing and a drive. That's back there. And out of here. Pete Alonso takes it deep. His 22nd homer of the year, and they jump out front. It's 1 0. They thought he could blow a high fastball by him, but he was ready for it. Look at how quickly he jumped on that pitch. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. Next one off the plate inside. And a count 2 and 1. That clips the corner. Oh, you just got to delete it. You give up that leadoff home run. Go back to work. Focus on this next batter. Up the middle. On the run. Sends it over to first. Oh. That's one out the bottom of the second. I love how guys at this level are able to slow the game down, whether it's in the batter's box or on defense. And right there, that was a good job of knowing just how much time he had. We talk about that internal clock. He was able to gather himself, get a good grip, and make an accurate throw across the diamond. Good pitch. He just kind of had him out in front on that pitch away and wasn't able to stay closed. And now here's Jeff McNeil. 3-2 on the way. Gets a piece and stays alive. And a 3-2. Base hit, left center field. Batting it. The first so, base. man aboard, and now it's Mark Vientos. And a pitch. Now fly ball to right center. And makes the grab, and that'll do it. The Pete Alonzo blast for the Mets. It's now a one nothing ball. On to the third inning, Kevin Biggio up to the plate. So now one and two. Next pitch has popped up. Vientos in position. And there's one down. Batting up. Tyler the Heineman, up. the next Tyler to hit. Heineman. And it's even up. <laughs> 
Good eye right there. Next offering is fouled back. And he deals. Got him looking. Two down. Frustrating end to the at bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. And that is cut on and missed. And the count's even at two. Next offering is fouled back. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Wanted to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Swings and misses. Chase the fastball up the ladder. Back here in Queens, bottom of the inning. Here's the catcher, Francisco Alvarez. The line to kick the pitch. And there's a ball. up the middle and a base hit. Well, I don't think that pitch would have been called a strike, but he did such a nice job of pulling his hands tight to the body and just getting enough of the barrel on it to be hard enough back up the middle for a knock. Here's Tommy Pham in there. And so now one and two. pitch and yeah, that's outside oh, slider misses three, outside two. and he walked Yo, him four, four. Got a great back and forth and that at bad. He had to lay off some really close pitches and somehow Boogie found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. And a foul ball. Well, these Mets showing great discipline at the plate and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. He's only given up one run, but the starter's pitch count is starting to get up there and that might be the best news yet for this offense. You know, sometimes all it takes is getting to the next arm before an offense does any damage and that might be the case today. The one-two. Ground ball left side could be two. Tags the runner for one on a belt. That's two. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. Went down on strikes his first time through. And ball four, two aboard. Oh, very close with the location right there. It's just tough to get rewarded on the call with pitches near the top of the strike zone. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonso. The 1-1. That's out to center field. Guerrero on his way over. No trouble here, puts it away for the out. And that is the inning. Two left for the Mets, but they hold a 1-0 lead. All set for the start of the Lead inning. Up, Here's the one. shortstop the at short the play. Bo Bichette. Bo Bichette. That one clips the outside corner. One and two. Fly ball down the line, and it drops in. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. now. And that one fouled off. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, try to stay out of a double play here. And the right hater deals. Spoils the two strike pitch, and he'll see another. Here's a 2 2. 
Rolled to short, could be two. Over to McNeil, and that's two. Brandon Bell next up for the Blue Jays. He's 0 for 1. The 1 1. And now 1 and 2. One, two now. Popped up. Lindor settles under this one. Makes the catch. And that is that. Ready to go. Bottom four. And stepping in for New York, Eduardo Escobar. The wind of the pitch. And that misses off the outside edge. Hit hard on the ground to short. Over to first. And one gone to the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Here's Starling Marte. Fly to left his first time up. And strike two. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a pop-up. Biggio drifts towards it. Makes the grab. Two down. Now batting. Jeff McNeil base. stands in. One for one with a single so far. The wind and the pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Two outs. And a foul ball. He stays alive. And a pitch. Off the plate inside. And it's two and two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's the third out. Nothing to New inning getting started. And here is Matt Chapman. And it is two and one. And that's through there for a strike. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, if he doesn't love it, he's not going to swing that early in the count. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Two down. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, the one-two misses to even the count. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good secondary lead doesn't have to get away from the catcher. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Whit Merrifield digs in now. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. The 2-1. Rip to first, caught. Dives for the bag, got him. Double play. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Home half. And welcome back. Now at the plate, Mark Vientos. And now the lefty. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Vientos on at first. Nobody out. Popped up. 
and a superb diving catch. Oh, this is an all-in effort right here. Going back on it, knows that the outfielder's not going to get there, lays out, and makes a tremendous catch. What a great job of picking up his pitcher. Pitch misses, and that's ball two. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Jimmy Garcia, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. Meza warming up as well. And here it comes. And it goes just foul. Great swing and solid contact. Just a little too quick. He's got to stay back a little longer. The punch out there. And he's down on strikes for the second time today. Here's Mark Canna. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Pulled the string on the changeup. I think the key is. Back here at City Field. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six. And now for the Jays, Kevin Biggio. Next offering is foul back. Left hand hitter waits. Outside corner got him looking. He can't believe it. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. The pitch. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. 2013 in the playoffs, you caught one as the Red Sox played the Rays in the division series. I sacrificed a bracelet. It was my wrist and my hand. That one, 95 to finish him off. Well, he throws him with a great fastball right on the corner. Oh, it's kind of like bowling when you think the ball's going to get into the gutter and somehow just hangs onto that edge and knocks down a pin. Well, he got the outside corner of the plate and got that called third strike. Center field. Fan settles under it. He's there. He's got it. And that'll do it. So, no runs, no hits. New Your pitcher now please. for the Jays, Jimmy Garcia. He last pitched four days ago, so he should feel pretty fresh. Welcome back. John Shabby with Chris Singleton in the booth and leading off the bottom of the sixth, Francisco Lindor. Swung on, belted. Back there. And that one's gone. He powers one out to right field, his 11th of the year, and they tack one on the board. It's 2 nothing. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Pete Alonso up now for the Mets. He's already homered here in this one. Here's a 1-1. One -one. That oh, one missed. Well, these Mets really impressing me with the quality of their bats in this one. It's been fun getting a chance to see them go to work. They really made that opposing starter work in this one. Ran his pitch count up, and now they've got an opportunity to continue making things difficult that's on the bullpen. Three. Next one misses, and that's ball three. And no, they haven't broken through in a big way in the runs column, but with the way they're grinding out at bats, it definitely feels like there's potential for more coming. Hey. That one's in there, and a full count now. We'll see another payoff pitch. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Line drive, and base hit. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. Ripped that one down the line and kept it fair. And even when you hit it that far out front, you still have to keep your hands tight to your body so you don't hook around that baseball and put it in foul territory. And that right there was perfect. And here is Eduardo Escobar.
Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Alonso gets his lead at first with nobody out. Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Guys become defensive, and all of a sudden, for the hitter, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. Right-handed reliever. And that one is lifted in the air. Springer there makes the catch. So up next for New York, Jeff McNeil, one for two. Right-hander kicks deals. Whoa. Ground ball left side and foul ball. And a pitch. Out towards right center field, and that is Springer. He's got it. That is the inning. The Mets do pick up a run on this solo blast. And it's two. We go to the top of the seventh, and the batter will be the shortstop, Bo Bichette. The 1-1. One -one. And misses oh, inside. Okay. Bullpen activity starting up now. Dominic Leone up and throwing. Nogasek getting loose as well. 2-1 pitch is in there, and the count is even. Back-to-back -back fastballs in. That last one called for a strike. Probably go away, but look for him to come back in there to try to finish you off. Righty delivers. And that one upstairs. Now in this three-ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. The pitch. Now a screamer into the outfield. Canna makes the grab one away. Here's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. The one-one. And there's the strike. Not sure if he could be in more of a groove. Looks really relaxed. He's retired seven straight. This guy's feeling it right now. And a swing and a miss. And there are two down. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. now and now the Toronto That's cleanup good. hitter, Brandon, Brandon Bell. Bell. Going to count one and two. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. I always remember watching Johan Santana pitch, and when he was in his prime, you would see a lot of guys out in front, right-handers pulling that change up in the stands and then fouling the fastball the opposite field up into the stands. Next offering is fouled back. And a pitch. And he hits a ground ball right side. Tosses to first. Third out, and that ends the frame. Three up, three down that time. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Anthony Bass. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their guys a chance to fight back into the game. The pitch. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Clearly, he was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just going to have to battle with two strikes. And that's a strikeout looking. Not sure about that call. Pitcher might have gotten a friendly strike three. And here's the catcher, Francisco Alvarez. Here's a 1-1. Just missed. Action in the pen down there. Trevor Richards getting ready to go.
Next Walter. pitch is downstairs. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. The 3 1 in for a strike, full count. Helpful. Fights it off, he'll see another. In the air, out towards left center. Makes the grab on the run. And there's two down. Come back to the top of the lineup. Tommy Fan up now for the Mets. Kicks and deals. That clips the corner. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. And the Mets go down one. Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Dominic Leon. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Now it's Matt Chapman. The one two. And now two and two. If you're on the mound right now, you know you have to retire this hitter. If he gets on base, it could open up the floodgates for this offense to score some runs. Ripped on a line. Coming on is Pham to make the play. The left fielder, number 25, Dalton. So up next, Dalton, Dalton Varsho, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Next pitch misses. Three and one. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it. So that's a good take by him. Fought off foul. Towards first. He'll do it himself. Oh. Two up, two down. The batter, number 15. Designated hitter with Merrifield. two outs, base is empty. And next for Toronto, Whit Merrifield. Kicks and fires. Bounce to the left side. Tosses to first. Third out. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. They're still down. It's two zip. Back here at the ballpark, bottom of the eighth. And here is Mark Canna. Here's a 1 1. And now 2 and 1 after that missed inside. Really good run, perhaps a little bit too much on that two seamer. Couldn't hold the corner. Next offering clips the zone count even at two. Righty to the plate. Fly ball to right. Diving. Gets down. Could be extra bases. Not stopping. He's going for three. And he makes it into third with a leadoff triple. With the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, both from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. And now it's Frankie Lindor. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. One away. Well, oh, Boog, I'll tell you, when he goes to look at the video of that pitch, he's going to want to punch himself. That now slider had hit me written hit. all over it, and clearly he just got a little too excited and was oh, out in front. Tell you what, when you get a pitch like that, you cannot miss it. Those have a chance to go a long way. And yeah, the right-hander deals. Fouls one off. Two and two. Here's a sack fly situation, and he's got to make sure he gets the ball out over the plate and get those arms extended. They're trying to crowd him with the infield in. This would be a big pickup if he can push a run across. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Swing and a ball popped up. Bichette sizes this one up. And there's two down. Eduardo Escobar up now for the Mets. Eduardo Escobar. High fly ball out to center field. Guerrero under it. And puts the squeeze on that one. And that is the third out of the inning. Mets leave one, but they hold a 2-0 lead. Welcome back. And here comes the closer, David Robertson. He's having a ton of success facing left-handed hitters this season, so this seems like a smart move to turn to him with a lefty at the plate. The next pitch misses, and that's ball two. At the belt and fires. That one fouled off, two and two. Here comes a pitch. Can't connect on the curveball, struck him out. And now the switch hitting catcher, Tyler Heineman. The 1 1. Ground ball up the middle, that's a base hit. The right fielder, number four. George. Here's George Springer. Springer. And he deals. Swinging a foul straight back. Off the outside edge, and now the count is two and two. That misses. And now it's three and two. Bo Bichette on deck for the Blue Jays. Goes down looking. Well, he's going to have some thinking to do when he leaves the ballpark after this one. That was his third strikeout, and this one looking, obviously, so he's been a little overmatched. He's got to find a way just to be more competitive up there at the plate. Pitch misses, two and one. And a big swing and a miss. Didn't recognize off speed, thought it was fastball. A little bit out in front. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. A lone scoring ball game in this one. Two nothing game, few errors, pretty clean. That's kind of what you want to see in terms of defense and pitching. A couple of runs was all it took to get the W today. Two nothing, your final here in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show, thanks for stopping by. I'm John.